Welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions. It is, as you've seen from the intro, finally autumn, even where I live, <laughs> which is a big deal, considering that if you possibly remember last year when I was making my Halloween video, it was 30 degrees. I was wearing shorts. Granted, I'm still wearing shorts, but that's just because for a couple of days, I just want to feel cold. I put on the flannel. I have the mushroom mug from the fall collection. <laughs> I just feel excellent and I'm thriving. It's been raining for days. It's going to continue raining for the next week. It's under 20 degrees at night. It's under 10 degrees. This is my perfect weather. I'm lighting all the candles. I'm drinking all the tea again, guilt-free. <laughs> I will drink tea even in 40 degree weather, but I would prefer to drink it when it's very good to drink, where it actually soothes the throat and the soul and everything in between. So this is going to be a video that's a little bit of a mishmash of two things because I wanted to do the cozy autumn book tag. But since I saw that I had way too many books to recommend, I'm gonna sort of also turn it into a autumn recommendations video because I had like covers I wanted to show off, I had the stories I wanted to show off, and I'm going to answer the questions, but I'm also going to recommend way more books than the questions want me to. So this is going to be hopefully not that long of a video, but very packed because finally the beginning of the best time of the year is actually genuinely starting. For reference, my actual favorite season is winter, but autumn is like there <laughs> like it's, it's like winter autumn spring summer <laughs> that's my ranking of the season so this is my second favorite season and i love it deeply i can't wait for the leaves to start changing color we're going to very quickly just go through the recommendations and then later maybe i'll give like extra stuff now we're going to set down the green tea mushroom because i'm going to need to actually hold up the books so the thing that reminds me of Autumn, that's the first question, which books always remind you of Autumn? Haunting of Hill House. I read it in January, ironically, so I don't really associate it with Autumn, but when I think of just eerie, spooky, psychological, when I think of psychological thriller vibes, which is technically the only kind of horror that I will ever consume because I don't like horror, I don't like jump scare, and I don't like gore, that serves no purpose to me. But psychological, like, dread, suspense, that sort of feeling, there's no one better than Shirley Jackson. I mean, I'm sure there are many others like her, but she can <laughs> bespell an atmosphere like no other. Now, I would recommend pretty much all of Shirley Jackson, like her short stories, her longer stories, whatever you want, but this is a classic for a reason, and it's very much spooky vibes like it really really lushly describes the lonely hill house castle on the hill or whatever the forest surrounding it little bubbling brooks and everything now the next recommendation is a little bit more specific and by that i mean jane eyre but i wouldn't recommend it for spooky season i would recommend it specifically for november the first time that i read it i think it was like november crossing into december and last year, I think I reread it also in November. I just associate this book so deeply with November. Like that time after its spooky season is over, there's no more like leaves falling. I mean, the leaves are still falling, but like you're past the excitement about that and you're looking forward to winter. You can smell the snow in the air, but it is still autumn. Like it's still rainy and blustery and gray. The atmosphere of the moors, perfect for that. That's why I would definitely call Jane Eyre just a November book. As far as that goes, I mean, any any Bronte, which is why I'm also recommending this, Emily Bronte's poetry collection, The Night is Darkening Around Me, loved her poetry. She can also give that November feeling to you. <laughs> I think she could also kind of go into October, but since we all kind of associate October with like genuinely spooky books, I don't think this would fit. Read both of the Brontes in November. I think that's it for the spooky vibes. And just one thing that I've always associated with autumn because mystery as a genre, like I watch a lot of mystery 
and have done so all my life but the book that i associate with autumn just the aesthetic of how the investigations are done and how the detective works has to go to sherlock holmes <laughs> like we just started watching with my mother the old sherlock holmes from the 80s which adapts the books unlike all the other modern retellings and it's first of all very accurate but we're not talking about adaptations i just associate sherlock holmes so much with the autumn time just sitting down watching an episode of a mystery of a detective solving crimes because this isn't gory like this isn't gory no sherlock holmes adaptation is gory or vicious or cruel you know what i mean it's bordering on cozy mysteries because you're just watching the two of them solving very atmospheric crimes as far as that goes i would recommend hound of the baskervilles best because i haven't read all of these yet but hound of the baskervilles to read during october perfection <laughs> perfection genuinely aesthetic wise and i would highly recommend that you just pick up a random sherlock holmes book during october because it's certainly certainly very perfect and you could pair it with your favorite adaptation. The last thing that I associate with Autumn, I feel like it's a little bit obvious. It's Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> like we all associate the Raven and all his poetry with like September and October. Now I have two, I have the big beautiful book, but I want to actually showcase the small ones because I also think their vibes are pretty cool. This could go hand in hand with one of the questions later. So I'm going to bring them back, but this is just the Raven and Selected Poems. And this is the really, really cheap vintage classics edition of Selected Stories. But I really, really like this cover. I think it's really cute and fitting to the season. So I associate Edgar Allan Poe heavily with October. And I don't think October can go by without me having read at least one short story or one poem by Poe. So <laughs> I think that would be very unusual. The next question is, what is your favorite autumnal book cover? Now, again, I would bring back both of these because, like, come on, the Black Raven, the Moon, the ha Creepy House, Hill House could also count for this because, like, perfection. But that is not what I want to highlight as far as autumnal book covers go. Now, I have a few. <laughs> First of all, these small poetry collections because I love the way that they look and they're classic poets, I think, to read in autumn. And that's Keats and Shelley, like look at those covers, the colors, the wheat harvest, the reds and oranges, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful as far as autumnal covers go. Now this cover by Ursula K. Le Guin isn't necessarily autumnal, but the colors kind of remind me of, <laughs> of the season, obviously, even though I don't think the book is even that autumnal, but it's beautiful. Like look at the colors and the dragons in the middle and the, the grove that they go to <laughs> love love it beautiful i wouldn't necessarily again say that this book is autumnal but the cover definitely is i was looking for autumnal book covers like i went through all of my shelves i couldn't find that many i could not find that many because to be fair everything i read which is like fantasy and manga and stuff not really like season themed like there are seasons in what i read but the covers aren't really seasonal they're mostly like dark colors or muted colors or it's very difficult to find something autumnal the next one again a book that i'm not really like uh, the biggest fan of but <laughs> the cover is lovely and it's the graveyard book i mean that's a classic i know people also read Coraline, but i do not want to frankly hear the word Coraline this autumn because that's a traumatizing childhood memory. The next one, which isn't really autumnal, but I also really, really like the colors, <laughs> is Ironheart by Charlie Fletcher. I'm going to mention that again when I go back to books I have to read. And obviously we have the two best books that I read in the last two years. The first one is Shirley. Like, look at this. Look at this. I'm not going to yap about this one, but look at it. Like the mill, the brown colors, the loch, the just creepy creepy vibes of like the secluded hills and the countryside in yorkshire and the blustery afternoon beautiful <laughs> absolutely stunning <laughs> and then my favorite cover possibly again of all time is just we have always lived in the castle like it's it's beautiful okay especially because it's like this that like it has and it has the mushrooms on the inside as i've shown many times and on the other side it has 
I think a little spider and everything and I deeply deeply love this cover it's so eerie in the perfect way and it is very Shirley Jackson that whole unsettling feeling without it actually being horror next question is what is your favorite autumnal drink to read with I mean I think we're clear on that <laughs> I think we're clear on that um First of all, I'm obsessed with mugs, so I have so many. And this year, I only bought autumnal mugs because one of the stores had like a seasonal collection. And I, I couldn't resist. I have this obsession with mushrooms, as you can see. Like I have the necklace, and I have this, and like everything mushroom. I, I want, I want, and I'm going to get. <sighs> so tea, tea is obviously, obviously my favorite. But as far as which tea. I actually don't like spiced teas. I don't like fruit tea or like, I do like apple cinnamon tea, but it's very difficult to find a good one because it's usually either too much apple or too much cinnamon. So I'm not even going to count that one because I haven't found a good one yet. The tea that I drink every day is black tea when I get up. It's either English breakfast or Earl Grey, but I love black tea. <laughs> like the way that people like the taste of coffee. I like the taste of black tea. I do use honey in it, but if I don't have honey, I will still drink it because I really, really like the taste and smell of it. So I will drink black tea every day, if not twice a day. Not maybe during the summer, although I <laughs> drank it during the summer as well, but I will drink it every day during the cold months. The second tea, which is this one that I don't necessarily drink every day, but I do also quite enjoy, like it's the second <laughs> under black tea, is green tea. I adore green tea. I drink it in the evening. I know they both have caffeine, but the green tea that I have it is definitely not, <laughs> not that caffeinated. So green tea in the evening, black tea in the morning. And in between, there's many that I would like to have. I like chamomile if I want to go to sleep. I like peppermint for a disturbed stomach i like i like anything herbal i will say as far as fruit goes the only thing i like is like what is it called forest berries that's the tea's name and i don't know i think that's it but the main ones are black tea and green tea i adore them and i drink them daily the next question i'm going to skip because it's a little ridiculous <laughs> Do you like to read late at night or early in the morning? Um, technically both. <laughs> technically both, again, because of my sleep schedule where I go to sleep early in the morning. Technically both, but realistically it's late at night. Although to be fair, I have a limit. I won't go to sleep at like three or four, but I don't really love reading past three or four. Like if I see that it's like 3.30 or four in the morning, I am not going to pick up a book. I like to read most like between mid midnight and three, ideally. And then I watch something and then later I go to bed, ideally between four and five. So between midnight and three, I would say is my favorite time to read, but I will read during the day if it's cloudy and I can read under a natural light without being absolutely scorched by the sun. So that's the answer to that question. The next thing that we have is your favorite spooky read. Obviously it is this because I pick it up every year, Penny Dreadfuls. I love this collection because it has a very good, I think, collection of stories. I think whoever did this was excellent, which is I think who? Stefan Jemianovic, I think is his name. So, I read through these every year. I pick it up. I read a few. It's excellent. I love doing it. I think I'm actually almost done with them. When I look at it, I think the only things that I haven't read is Frankenstein, The Executioner. I want to say Sweeney Todd. I don't think I read that that, that yet. And maybe Louisa May Alcott. I think I didn't read that. Or maybe I did. But I think I read almost all of these. Definitely my favorite spooky collection. Now, as far as recommendations go, I'm going to try and see how many of these I remember and see what I can... Adventure of a German Student, I highly recommend. It was a lot of fun. The Werewolf, not that much. Pit and the Pendulum, excellent. Read it. Sonny Bean, the cannibalism story. I mean, <laughs> I mean, read it. It's short. It's kind of creepy. The Tale of a Ghoul by E.T.A. Hoffman, pretty good. Pretty good, I will say. Waking Up the Dead, that was, 
I read that last year, if I remember correctly. That was genuinely a fun thing to read. Wilkie Collins, I do not remember that one, to be very honest. The Devil's Receipt, I do not remember. Arthur Conan Doyle, that was great. The Diary of a Mad Men, I think, is the thing that stuck with me the most. As far as, like, story goes and how insane it is and how it makes you feel by the end, The Diary of a Mad Men definitely made me feel the most. Expedition to Hell was pretty good. Jekyll and Hyde is one of my favorite autumn books, so I'm recommending it here. I do not remember the list. I know that The Duelists I did not enjoy, and Buried Alive was actually kind of horrifying, so excellent collection. Pick it up if you want to just pick up genuinely unsettling, uncomfortable reads this autumn. <laughs> there is another question I'm going to skip, and that is Ultimate Comfort Read. I feel like I talk about this a lot. <laughs> so I'm just not going to repeat myself. I'm very quickly just going to say, not so much Book of Friends, anything from Anne of Green Gables, and anything by Heather Fawcett except her young adult books. Comfort reads, like, to the max. The next question, what is your favorite autumnal reading snack? I, I would say, like, I like cookies. Like, wh what is it called in English? Gingerbread, but not quite gingerbread, like the creation version of a gingerbread anyway <laughs> and mug cakes i'm really into mug cakes just finding a really simple recipe where you can have a small treat i'm a big fan of those but this autumn i would actually really really like to make some more autumnal foods like soup like caramelized onion noodles very specific types of cake and cookie like i really really am interested in that this autumn because I hate cooking as far as it goes. Like I'm not an enthusiastic cook where I love the process. I actually find it extremely irritating how you spend more time making the food than eating the food. But this autumn I'm going to like do my best to find recipes that aren't that much of a hassle to make, but are really, really good to eat. So <laughs> we're gonna have a good time as far as food goes. The next question is one of my favorites because the next thing that I'm obsessed with after books and what, what was the other thing mugs is candles i i will always buy candles so much that i actually force myself to start making candles for myself i bought wax and the entire kit just so i could stop buying candles which didn't really help i didn't stop making candles but the things that i love are these like long candles especially when they're red i just love the vibe that they provide I adore them. The next one is the one that you saw me light before. I didn't leave it on because <laughs> I didn't want to. But the warm pumpkin one. I like any candle that has this like tinted glass, brown, orange, whatever. Beautiful. I adore it. The smell of this one's a little bit odd, but I adore the candle itself. The next one, I think this is like from Ikea or one of those random, random stores, but apple. Any type of apple candle, apple cider candle, adore. I am there for it. This candle that I'm burning. <laughs> This candle is mint from Ikea. It's a beautiful, wonderful scent. I adore it. And since it's not winter yet, I don't really light my tree evergreen candles quite yet. But the candle that I bought recently that I deeply, deeply like <laughs> is this one, like a sandalwood candle. I just burned through my Woodwick sandalwood candle, which I hated. But it has the same tinted dark <laughs> glass. And it's also brown like the other one. I really, really like sandalwood. And it has like the, this kind of lid. I adore this candle. I haven't lit it yet and I'm, I don't really want to. But since I got wax and I'm kind of making candles again, I'm like, I can keep these. I can keep the <laughs> these things forever. The only thing is that I don't have such fancy scents as you can buy. But that doesn't matter. I get to keep these jars forever and make candles and reuse them it is excellent i would highly recommend that if you like like candle jars that you have but are really sad about burning the candles just buy some wax and a kit to like put the wick in there it's very cheap you are not going to regret it the next question when you're not reading what is your favorite autumnal activity I'm also going to be quick with this one because I feel like I don't have seasonal hobbies. Everything I like doing, I like doing year-round. It's just that during the summer, I do it less. <laughs> but I have the same things that I like doing, and that's writing, watching TV series, anime, films, journaling. Admiring the rain is what I put on the list, which is very funny to me, but I agree. Like, this year when it started raining, and I was... Every year when I'm cold for the first time, when I go outside and I feel that chill, I almost cry. And I'm not even kidding, I'm not being dramatic. 
because the heat is so so oppressively bad here especially this year you might have heard this if you're travel or if you know someone who's traveled to Europe or if you live in Europe the heat this year and the last few years has been oppressively vicious for half the year so when the fi sun finally goes away and I see the gray skies I feel that cold chill and I see the rain I feel like crying I feel so happy that for the first few weeks that it's cold I just want to feel cold <laughs> and I love that I love that so much that it's finally here so I would say that admiring the rain, admiring the snow, if it does show up and being very deeply happy that it's finally cold and I do not see the sun is one of the things that I love doing in autumn. So now the last question is what is your on your autumnal reading list? I'm going to combine this with just recommending books and what I want to read and doing a little bit of a roundup of the video. So consider this a recommendation, but also what I want to read list. I went on a rant. My rant was deleted. Maybe you should be grateful, but you maybe remember, or I'm going to just say it again. Last year, for like August through to April of next year, or this year, I didn't get any mail. And the mail that I did get was like six months backlogged. So after my birthday, I was so scared. So I made the big order, and all the books got to me. And for a couple months there, like the post office actually functioned but now i already had to fund ask for a refund on one book and i ordered this book gorming gas by mervyn peak if i have to order a refund for this i'm going to be depressed because i actually wanted this book like it's gothic it has the like overwhelming atmosphere of a magical castle it inspired tolkien i wanted to read it as soon as i found out about it and i want it i i want it in my hands if it doesn't get here and I have to ask for a refund, color me depressed, <laughs> color me depressed. I'm happy because of the weather, but I'm going to be extraordinarily depressed that the post office just cannot work for more than three months at a time. Moving on, Blue Castle by L.M. Montgomery. I was going to order this too, but until Gorming Gas is in my hands, I do not want to order anything else. So I might just read the ebook, but I doubt it because L.M. Montgomery's writing is very, even when it's beautiful, it's very packed together, dense, lush. I don't like reading it on my tablet. The next one's in the next one is Hangs a Man by Shirley Jackson, which is coming out, I think came out in September actually, like this modern classics edition. I want it to match my other books. But again, I'm not ordering it. Until I get Gormangath, I'm not ordering it because I'm just supposed to assume that I'm not going to get any books again until next year and that it just upsets me. Let's move on because all the books I wanted to read are also books I wanted to order. So <laughs> this is a bit of a sore subject. Let's move on. Um, I want to keep reading these. I think I want to complete the collection. Will I finish Frankenstein? I doubt it. I tried to read Frankenstein twice. Could not do it. I even have the audiobook. This is read by Dan Stevens. I love Dan Stevens. I, can't, I cannot stand Frankenstein. It's so boring. I extremely doubt that I'm going to read it. I want to keep going with Sherlock Holmes, like I said later, I want to keep going with it. I want and as far as that goes, um, I think that's it for the TBR. No, this. <laughs> There's always this. Okay. Um, Name of the Rose. <laughs> also, that's kind of an autumnal cover, like the leaves and the vines. Like it, but I don't know. I don't know if I will be in the mood for this. But still, it is medieval. It is a mystery. There's a detective. There's a murder investigation. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> that's a big maybe. Now, that's it for the TBR. Now, I'm just going to run through the recommendations as I already said them. The only two that I didn't already mention, and I'm going to go through this very quickly. If you want something scary unsettling and bordering on horror this is the only horror recommendation for me you're going to get read any one of the stories that i mentioned earlier and these two the only ones that i haven't mentioned in this video yet there's a slip under the microscope by hg wells and the yellow wallpaper by charlotte perkins gilman excellent books this is if i remember a mystery i mean not really a mystery it's science fiction but for some reason it read like a mystery or maybe it's just because it's like science fiction with, I don't know, 
it's a little disturbing. That's why I would recommend it. This everyone recommends this as horror, which it is. It is not. <laughs> it is absolutely not. It's just a woman going insane. People say horrifying, but you're lying. <laughs> like it's horrifying what happened to this woman, but the book itself is not horrifying. It's absolutely not something that will get you scared. It's just a woman losing her mind. It's actually more horrifying how she was treated, but that doesn't make the book horrifying, if you get what I mean. So I would still recommend it. It's definitely great. Now, this, I'm not sure if I would recommend the actual book for Autumn, even though I love the cover, because it more reads like late summer or early spring, because there's still vegetables growing and stuff. I don't think it's autumn during the book, but you could definitely read it. I did. Adored it. I would absolutely recommend this for autumn, even though I read it in spring. I have to read this and its sequel, Silver Tongue. Those are the last books that the mail actually delivered to me, so I'm going to read them. These are my childhood favorites about statues coming alive in London. I adore the series so much. Do read this if you like. Neil Gaiman, I don't really, if we're going to be honest. Read the poetry, certainly, because that's such a vibe setter for this time of year. Read this in November, and do listen to me when I say that. Read it in November. <laughs> as far as, like, Emily Bronte goes and Edgar Allan Poe, just pick it up every now and then. If you don't like poetry, just pick up one of the poetry. And, obviously, the book that I recommend you just read, period, is that. If you've watched the show, apparently you're not going to like it because the show is straight up horror. This is just like psychological dread and suspenseful buildup. But read it because it's excellent. <laughs> it's not my favorite Shirley Jackson that I actually read, but just the way it was written stuck with me. Like when I remember it, I remember it fondly, perhaps even more fondly than I did when I actually read it. So that is it. <laughs> that is it for my recommendations in this video. Cheers. I have a little bit of the tea left. And yes happy beginning of the best season of the year for some the second best for me and i really really hope to read more and post more because my will to live just <laughs> resuscitates itself as soon as it's cold outside and my eyes don't behold the sun so i will see you in the next video